Good morning and welcome. It's Motivational Monday. Welcome to the morning voiceover huddle. My name is Bill DeWeese, voiceover talent, voiceover coach, voiceover demo producer. And it's good to have you on the stream this morning. If you would take just a moment to do me a favor, number one, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. There's over a thousand, you heard me right, count them. There's over a thousand videos on this channel to help you make more money in voiceover. All absolutely free, no charge. Uh, I'd love for you to uh, thumbs up and like the videos that you like, share them with your friends, family, and voiceover colleagues. And uh, take a second also to give me your name and where you're watching or listening from this morning in the live stream chat. Well, we set aside Mondays as Motivational Monday, just a thought, something to hopefully encourage, to inspire you. We all, we all need somebody to help move us along the road to where it is we want to go. And this morning, we want to talk about the thing, the two things that probably hold most people back or keep people from achieving what they want to are doubt and discomfort. The lack of belief that you're actually capable or worthy of doing something. And also comfort, the thing that wants to hold us where we're at, because it may not be where we want to be, but at least we know it, right? It's the devil we know. So we just become complacent because if we take a step this direction, eh, it might challenge us just a bit without realizing that to get to where we want to be, we have to become the person, a different person, the person that can live in that space that we want to, 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 to occupy because we're the you know, we're the people that occupy this space. So the stuff that got us here is not the stuff that's going to get us to where we want to go. And so that's where the discomfort comes in. And so I read a quote and I don't know who the author of the quote is. It's not me. So I'm not taking credit for it. Um, but it said something along the fact that discomfort is what keeps many people from achieving their dreams and their goals. And I was thinking, wow, I, I was just thinking about my own life, and my own journey and, 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 and thinking about the fact that I've had to fight again. I think anybody who achieves anything or does anything that they want to do in life has to fight a battle of discomfort because the truth is a couch and a recliner is way more comfortable than running shoes. A milkshake is way more comfortable and soothing than a protein shake. A job can be far more comfortable than being self-employed. And these are just a few examples. Now, I'm not saying to become discomfort or become to become uncomfortable for uncomfort's sake. I mean, we are wired to uh, to be safe and secure and it serves us well in many areas. But when there's something that you have a desire to do and to achieve, you better believe that to get to where you want to go, it's going to require a lot of discomfort because you've got to grow into that person. And, and, and none of us, we don't really want, we have to want that more than we want the, dis, uh, you know, the discomfort because we're going to get it. It's never, it was, it's not comfortable becoming a voice actor or voice talent if that's not what you've done before. It's not comfortable to become self-employed if that's not what you've done before. But if that's something that you desire deep down inside to do, then the payoff is huge, not just financially, because comfort keeps us from several things. It keeps us from achieving what we want relationally, physically, financially. I mean, just go through the list. If, if, if we go and look at the things that we haven't achieved or the areas of failure in our life, oftentimes we can relate it back to just being comfortable. We just did not want to step out because we were afraid that we would fail or we'd be found out to be a fraud. And the reality is everybody feels that way. And failure is, it's a, it's a requirement. It's not even an option, it's a requirement. It's the only way you grow, it's the only way, way you learn. It's the fodder, the, the fuel for success. So you have to reframe that in your mind. And I just wanna challenge you, uh, get uncomfortable. Because that's what growing is all about. That's what becoming a good voiceover talent is all about. It's, it's about doing the things. See, you wouldn't be here if you're already where you wanted to be. So chances are you're going to have to get uncomfortable to get where you want to be. So that's my challenge for you on this Motivational Monday. And if you need help doing that, that's what I do as a voiceover coach. And just check out the description below the video. You'll find links to my training 
and coaching resources. Check it all out. Well, let's see who we've got on the stream this morning. Uh, and you'll have to excuse me here while I, again, I'm still operating off of my MacBook Air's 13 and a half inch screen. Still haven't, we're, we're still in the process of unpacking in our new house. Still haven't found the, the hub for my computer, which will allow me to hook up an external monitor. That's okay. In the meantime, I'm making it work. We've got Phil from Tokyo. Good morning, Phil. Hope you're having a great day as well. Corey, happy Motivational Monday to you in Wisconsin. Janet in Florida. Ralph in Cedar Falls, Iowa. And my best, Jim Belushi. How you doing? I'm doing fine. I hope you're doing fine too. Christopher, how are you doing in San Antonio? Tim in Salt Lake. Greg in Asheville, North Carolina. Desiree uh, in Houston. Denise in Long Island. Rusty in Michigan. What's up, Keith, in Washington, in the state of Washington? Casey, how are you doing? In Flowery Branch, Georgia. Sandra, Dallas, Fort Worth. John in Memphis. We've got Jolie. Good morning. It's a sunshiny morning in Minnesota. Glad to hear that, Jolie. Sandra, Westerville, soon to be in Worthington. Awesome. I used to work for a radio station. Studios were in Worthington. Back in the day. Hope your move goes well, Sandra. Uh, let's see here. We've got Dallas, another another person from Dallas, Fort Worth, Chad in Daytona Beach. John, how are you doing? Hey, Matt in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Todd in Tallahassee, Florida. AJB says, "Truth spoken here." Well, that's what we that's what we try to do because the truth what the truth will set you free. May not be comfortable, but it'll set you free. I think we can I think we can tear that off now. Scotty says, here's to a productive week. Brookings, South Dakota. Awesome. Meryl, good morning to you. In northern New Jersey, very true, she says. My biggest battle with cold call, cold call marketing. Yeah. Cold car marketing. Cold call marketing. Sorry, guys. For those of you who are not familiar with the concept, is cold meaning the idea that the person you're calling doesn't know you. So it's not warm. Warm would be somebody who at least they know who you are. And so you're not going in, you know, cold. Cold calls, you're calling somebody you've never talked to before to introduce your voiceover services. And it can be any kind of cold calling, it can be terrifying. And why is that? Why is it terrifying? Because we are afraid somebody's going to say no or get mad at us or hang up on us, which by the way, rarely do any of those things ever happen. But oftentimes we don't take the time to think, well, what if they did? What if somebody did hang up on me? Well, what if somebody did get angry with me? So what? They don't even know me. Does it really matter? I mean, they're a business, you're a business. This is how businesses survive. So you've got nothing to apologize for. You've got nothing to feel bad about. But I, again, I get it. And the only way you get through that and over that is by, is by doing it. <laughs> you know, the antidote is actually swallowing the fear, which is no fun. Because it'd be great if we could just take a pill to just relieve all that anxiety and fear. And then, you know, we, we could just do whatever we wanted. But the the cure, uh, the antidote is to step into it. So, Meryl, thanks for sharing. And, and I know you're doing well and, and uh, I'll continue to do the things you need to do. Let's see here. We've got uh, Johnny in San Francisco. Rob, how's it going in Loveland? Here's to breaking out of the comfort zone. There you go. Ron in Stormy, Charleston, South Carolina. Melissa, good morning to you in San Diego. Uh, Jean, oh, hold on a second. That live, that darn live stream just keeps moving on me, whether I want to keep up with it or not. Uh, Jean in Ottawa. Uh, the course I suggest to, to learn how to run a voiceover business is the voiceover blueprint. Link below in the description. It the thing that I think a lot of people don't understand is the blue, the blueprint is like voiceover university. It's not, it's not just a performance class. It is business. It's performance. It's ever it's, it's audio. It's everything that you need to understand about voiceover is all self-contained in this voiceover university that we call the voiceover blueprint. Uh, let's see here. Good morning from Amarillo, Bradford. Hello in Simpsonville, South Carolina. 
Jack, good morning to you in Phoenix. Just finished your first audiobook, made almost no money. It was very uncomfortable, but I learned a lot and now I have some experience to carry forward. Yes. And Jack, you also get the bell this morning for doing that first book. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the first job's entry level, right? I mean, when you first get started, it's entry level work. So it's not going to be a lot of money typically. Uh, but what you do, what you've done now is you've begun to grow and learn and you've got gotten past through some of that discomfort and now you can move on and continue to grow, not just in your skills, but in your confidence and certainly in your income as well. Guy down in St. Louis, Bob, how are you doing in Wadsworth, Ohio? Wally, uh, feeling the bird inside from, <laughs> from Maryland. Rob, how are you doing in San Francisco? Riley, Welcome back to God's time zone, that being central time. It is. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. And I apologize if you're not in God's time zone, but central time um, was the, it was the original time. I'm sure it's in the Bible someplace. We just need to dig that out or manipulate something to make it seem that that's, that's the way it is. Hey, Barb, how are you doing in Ann Arbor, Michigan? Oh, let's see here. We've got Northern Utah in this morning. Russ. In Cleveland, Wade in Philadelphia, just finished and had my audio book approved. Oh, Wade, congrats, awesome, good news. Will in Maryland, Scott in Texas. Damon landed his first Fiverr job yesterday. Awesome, hey, I love that, I love it. Hey, Lisa in Toledo, Wade in Philadelphia. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I just mentioned you, Wade, there. Again, congrats on the first audio book. Dr. Bob, how are you doing in Clearwater, Florida? Greg says, I finally got to see you live. Welcome, Greg. Good to have you here live. John in Jackson, Tennessee. Greg in Winnipeg, Manitoba. John says, thanks for your pill of fear. All we have to do is swallow it. <laughs> and, that's, and that is the truth. Uh, love the central time zone. Glad you moved back to middle America. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it took me a while. I'll be honest. I love, you know, I grew up in Eastern time. And here's the thing I do. I, I, I'm joking, of course, when I talk about central time zone. I mean, I do like it. I do like it for a number of reasons. But the reason I loved Eastern time growing up as a kid is because it would stay daylight longer. And I remember we could stay out and play in the neighborhood like to between nine and 10. You know, on the longest days, it wouldn't get dark till nearly 10 o'clock in the evening. <clears throat> and I loved that as a kid growing up. Melissa, thank you for your kind remarks. Terry says, kudos on your new book. It's a gem, by the way. I have your first book, book too, highly recommended. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate that. Yeah, for you guys who don't know, I've written two books on voiceover. Just go to Amazon, search my name, and uh, you'll see them. Greg, uh, you will also might see a lot of books that I've recorded along the way too, but just look for the ones that I actually wrote. Greg says, I just did my first two audiobooks on ACX. Yeah. Awesome, Greg. Congratulations to you. Nick says, Nick from Mount Prospect, Illinois, uh, booked up my first five VO jobs this month. The Blueprint has been invaluable. Nick, so thrilled to have you in the voiceover Blueprint. And congrats on those five jobs this month. That's, that's what I love to hear. That's fantastic. I love to ring the bell. Hey, Dan, how's it going? Uh, Dan's congratulating Greg. Awesome. I'm working my way through my first ACX job, also royalty share. Yes, Dan. Dan's getting it done. Dan, love it. Keep it up. Ethan says, good morning from Toronto. Hey, guys, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. You know, I know that, you know, growth and becoming the stuff that you want to become, um, it, it can be scary. And the, the truth is, the older you get, the scarier it gets. Only because I think we get more set in our ways and we we start to hold more tightly to the things that we have and we don't want to risk what we have. And and I, and I, I mean, hey, I get that. I didn't start recording voiceovers until I was 46 years old. So I get that. And for me, you know, um, I really didn't pursue it until I lost what I had, lost my job. Um, company I was working for it went out of business. And so, uh, you know, I had to do something. And I don't wish that for people, but sometimes that's what it takes to get us, you know, where we need to go. So uh, just remember, if it gets uncomfortable, just reframe it in your mind. Discomfort can be a good thing. If you're touching a stove and it becomes uncomfortable, 
then you need to take the hand off the stove. That's that's what discomfort is for. It's to, to keep us safe. But it can also keep us from becoming all that we're capable of becoming. So you have to, to understand and learn the two. And then when you're becoming uncomfortable because you're growing, embrace that and realize this is the this is what it feels like to become what you want to become. The process. It feels better after you've done it. You'll become you'll become comfortable in a new place. And uh, so you just got to keep moving forward. So do it and have a great day. Have a great week. I'll see you back here tomorrow morning and I'll talk to you soon.